Good morning from Lahti, Finland. We are at AYC 2022. Welcome to you all, um, to those who joined us yesterday evening, but also for those who are joining now for the first time. My name is Vera Johnson, and this is my husband, Levi Johnson. So good to see you guys here. We had an excellent time last night um, with the program here. And if you missed out, you truly did miss out. <laughs> it was amazing. Um, but we have so much more to bring to you this morning, beginning with the morning program that we're about mm -hmm. to go live to mm. very shortly. Yeah. Yes. And um, for those who might not know, we have an app called Vova. I'm not entirely sure how it's said correctly. It's spelled W-H-O-V-A. A. And you can download that app and you can there be interacting with people who are actually here on site, but also with those around the world who are watching. Um, and you can also find all the links to all these programs through that app as well. Yeah. The app is free, um, so please download it and interact Sign with one up another. And you can actually see all the people there and you can message them directly. You yeah. can see if you know any friends that are here at um, AYC 2022. We, how many do we have signed up so far? 2,303. So 2,303 people waiting to connect with you guys. Download the app, sign on up. And yeah, I, I think we have some, even some viewers watching from the app. So yes, yeah, we do. welcome Very to you exciting. guys. We want to begin and open this program with a prayer. And so um, Vera, would you like to pray for yeah, us? Love to. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I want to thank you so much for this second day of AYC. We have already been so blessed um, by the talk that David Ashford gave us last night. Um, we want to thank you for uh, all the participants here on site, but also those who are watching live uh, from their homes or uh, from their churches or wherever they are. <clears throat> and we just want to pray um, that your Holy Spirit could be moving here on site, um, but also on every home. We pray that... Uh, Lord, you could do miracles in our hearts, uh, that you could speak to us directly. Mm. Uh, we pray for our speakers, um, for Daniel as well, who's going to be sharing the message very shortly. Please with, be with them, um, hide them behind your cross. And uh, we pray that our hearts would be open, mm. that we could have open eyes and open ears to hear and to see um, the message that you have to share with us today. And so um, we pray your blessing over us, our families, our friends, um, this beautiful community that we have, um, the Worldwide Adventist Church. We uh, pray that you could be with all of us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Super, super exciting. Um, yesterday, David, uh, the evening presenter, talked to us about rest and how rest is, is part of who we are as humans. How did you go with getting some rest last <laughs> night? <laughs> I did okay. You, you know when you're in an event like this, it's always late nights and early mornings. It but, so is. But the rest that I got, yeah, you're slept surviving. like a baby. Yep. I want to thank you guys for joining us bright and early. Please let us know where you're joining us from, what country is your home country, and what time is it there? Have you woken yeah. up early to join us this morning? We'd if, love to know. Yeah, if you have, we, we're proud of you for doing that. It was hard for us to get out of bed this morning. We were, we were up past midnight, I think, last night, and just meeting people and, and getting to know some of the people. I mean, you can't get to know everyone, but some of the people here. Yeah. We are going to have a packed day again today, lots of program uh, for you guys. And so maybe we give you a little rundown of what's going to be happening today. Totally. Um, yeah, we have the main program starting soon, um, but please stay tuned even after the main program because there's more to come. There is. So we're about to go to the morning program very shortly, in a few minutes. And then after that, what happens here at AYC is everyone's breaking up into smaller groups. And they're actually going to discuss some questions based on the sermon. And we actually have brought together a group of participants, a group of people that are also going to discuss this in this studio. So you're going to have a chance to be a part of this. We would love you to interact with us. Um, send in questions about the talk, and we're going to discuss these topics all together. That's exciting. We also have a workshop with Pastor Patrick Johnson. What a good last name. Yes, good, great last name. <laughs> um, 
I call it Black Into God's Plug into God's heart. Disability and the Bible. Interesting topic. Very interesting. Disability and the Bible. I don't think I've ever sat in a workshop that talked about disability and the Bible. Um, And we're going to bring that to you live as well. There are many workshops that are taking place. And each day we want to bring to you one of those workshops. And so we're going to be changing and swapping which workshop we're going to so we can bring you as many as possible. Disability in the Bible is the topic for today by Patrick Johnson, and that's going to happen just after the small group. Yeah. Um, Then remember this evening uh, again at 7 p.m. our time. Yes. uh, There will be program here in the studio. You will see us here again. Yeah. And, um, it's going to be full of more videos, more content that, in fact, the guys here don't even get to see. We get, it's true. We get a longer program with you guys, and we're super excited about that. And then we're going to join them live for their program. We're going to see David share his second message. And so today is just full of blessing, blessing upon blessing. Keep your, your phone charged, your computer plugged in, because we have so much in store for you today, and we wouldn't want you to miss any of it. I'm excited for today. Yeah, I'm so excited. And remember to yeah, be in contact with one another and be part of also uh, all these challenges that those who were here yesterday, um, the bottle throwing video that um, hashtag AYC2022, one chance. Um, and yeah, be here with us. Stay connected. Totally, and totally. We're excited to to start today. Yeah, and I think it's now time to head into the morning program. So I believe there is a countdown now until the morning program. So we'll hand it over to them. Good morning, everyone. I hope you had a good night of sleep. I hope you made yourself familiar with your sleeping areas. For the uh, first thing we're going to do this morning is we're going to have a short conversation with each other. Yes, for this interaction, we want you to turn to the person behind you or in front of you and just share one sentence, what you're most excited of, of this AYC 2022. So just please talk to each other, what you're expecting. Get to know each other a little bit better. Stop. 
Want to get Emma? Someone. <laughs> Did you sleep well? Good. This morning I just want to start with a passage of scripture. I'll be reading from Lamentation chapter 3. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. This quite famous passage of scripture, but I think the context is very fascinating. Jerusalem is just taken over by the Babylonians and it's been destroyed to the ground. And the most of the book of Lamentation is just this painful mourning on the destruction. But yet in the middle of the book, we can find this gem, these verses and few more that I just read which are describing the wonderful mercy of God, even in the most darkest, the most difficult circumstances. So we can be sure that in every moment, in every morning, every day, His mercies, mercies are truly true. And it's so sweet to trust in good God. Trust in 
from Iceland. Uh, I was asked to give my testimony, it's a short one. But uh, so I met Jesus 10 years ago 
and he saved me from a life of uh, crime and drugs, hopelessness and despair. And he gave me a life full of love and hope. But if there is anything I've learned in these 10 years is that I tend to take control and put God behind me. But that's when things start to go down and struggle begins. Jesus says in Luke 18, 27, the things that are impossible for man are possible with God. So let's surrender all things to God. Thank you. We have a living God who actually transforms our lives. And as we are now moving on to the next song, I'd like to challenge you all to listen to the lyrics because this song in a very wonderful way encapsulates the whole gospel narrative, King of Kings.
my name is Jan and I will pray on creation. Dragi Bože, hvala te na ovoj prilici što smo ovdje i što možemo tebe proslavljati, tebe koji si nam omogućio i dao novi život, omogućio si nam da da drugima prenosimo tvoju radosnu vijest i da svima govorimo koliko si ti velik i dobar. Hvala ti na svemu. Amen. For our next segment, I have the privilege to introduce to you a very special person. He is going to be one of our speakers. He is married to the girl of his dreams. He has two beautiful children, and his name is David Bosket. Daniel. Daniel Bosket. I'm so sorry, Daniel Bosket. <laughs> It's okay. Hello. Hello, Daniel. We have. Hello. We have prepared two questions for you. The yes. first question. It's me. Um, <laughs> you worked in the youth ministries for over 10 years. Mm -hmm. So is there or why are you still passionate about that? What makes you still passionate about that? Uh, I love youth. I have always been working with youth. And even now uh, in Sagunto as president of a college, I believe is, is the perfect job because it includes the youth ministry, it includes the administration, it includes the pastoral aspects. And to me right now, I'm enjoying administration because it's, it's like a way to create things, to shape reality, and that is a passion of my life regarding youth. So we can create a new world in Sagunto Adventist Campus. Don't miss it. Yes. <laughs> Since you've been working with youth people for this long, um, there must have been some funny or embarrassing moments on the way there. Uh, would you like to share maybe one of those moments with us? I know everybody of you wants to hear one of those. Yes. Right after the Valencia Congress, I don't know if you remember, the next day I left to Argentina. We left to Argentina as a teaching uh, position there. And I was given a little electric wheel, uh, and I was always through the campus skating on my electric wheel, and I remember one of the mornings that I just fell off the ground in front of my students. I just spread myself on the floor. <laughs> I just, are you okay, teacher? Yes, yes, no worry, I'm fine. So I went to class all dirty, and that was, yeah, one of the aspects of youth work that was some embarrassing, yes. <laughs> Th thank you for sharing that. No problem. <laughs> um, uh, we can't wait to hear everything that you have to say to us. Um, right now, we're going to have the Bible reading for today. And for okay. that, I want to invite Magda on the stage. Good. So the uh, Bible text we'll be reading is from John chapter 20 and verses 11 to 18. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it that you're looking for? Thinking she, he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. And she turned toward him and cried out in Aram Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Amen. Amen. For our next segment, um, we're going to have some icebreaker questions that um, we want to lead you guys into this topic that Daniel Bosquez is going to be talking about. 
You're going to see the icebreaker questions on the screen. And we want everybody to just talk to each other, talk to the person next to you, the person behind you, in front of you, and discuss these questions really quick. We're going to go into the audience and maybe pick out one or two people to have a short sentence about that. And yeah, let's see what you come up with. You have five minutes. Okay, I think Jonathan has found his target. 
I want you to please become quiet again. We will ask one or two people to just briefly explain what they talked about. Yes, for the first question, I found Dan from Germany. Dan, did Mary have reasons to cry on Sunday morning? Yes, I think um, she lost her savior, so that's reason enough. <laughs> yes, I think so too. <laughs> Thank you very much. I think we're looking for one more person. Okay, he's running. He sees the person. He found him. Our Perfect. second person is? My name is Uros. Where are you from? I'm from Serbia. Yeah. Uh, uh, the second question, what's your answer to that? Uh, can I take the mic? No. Okay, sorry. Uh, why do you think Jesus first appeared to Mary before the other disciples? Okay. Um, I was looking at the context because it was like 2,000 years ago and women and men were not on the same like scale ranges, they was pretty much uh, lesser than men. And if, we, for example, a woman came up and spoke about Jesus resurrecting, that will require more faith for uh, them to actually believe that Jesus rose from the dead. Because, for example, if apostle came who was very, very close to Christ, most people would believe them. But if a uh, woman came, because at that time, women wouldn't respect it as much as they are now. So, yeah, that's my conclusion. Mm, very interesting thoughts on that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So now we have Daniel. Welcome on stage. Daniel. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning, Congress. Buenos días, España. Muy bien, muy bien. Sorry. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for inviting me to the Youth Congress team. Thank you for the music. I appreciate it very much. Yes. And I'm very happy to be here in Finland. I never thought I would be so close from Santa Claus, even so close to the North Pole. I feel a little bit dizzy, so I can tell the earth is round to all the flat earth friends. It's not true, okay? I can tell it from here. It's, it's like you see the world from a different perspective here. You know, today is a very special day for most of you, but especially for me. August 3, 2022. Today is my 14th anniversary, wedding anniversary. <laughs> It's been 14 years since I married the most beautiful Argentinian on earth, and she's here with me. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias, Gordi. Te amo un montón. Y gracias por compartir estos 14 años conmigo. Thank you. I was going to sing a song for you, but I, th I thought that the best gift would be not to sing today. So that counts also. Yeah. Our morning devotionals these three days will be based on the Gospel of John. As you know, this Gospel is very special also. It was written by John, the closest disciple from, from Jesus. Uh, it was the latest Gospel written. So we can find some really deep truths in there. Uh, today's uh, reading, it was read, John chapter 20, but before jumping to that, I just wanted to mention that my daughters know that I like jokes. Jokes not always come out or turn out good. I remember one time they had a pajama party at home with uh, her uh, family relatives, and I had an idea. I thought of hiding a Bluetooth speaker in the room where they will be sleeping, and I told them before going to bed, you know, I've heard that a lion has escaped from the zoo. I don't think he will make it here, but just in case. I just planted that seed on them. I don't know why I did this, by the way. So I went to my room, and I waited for them to fall asleep almost, and then I turned my telephone on, 
I connected to the speaker, and I searched on YouTube, Lion Roar. I pressed the play, and magic happened. You know, it sounded so loud, all of them started to cry. All the family relatives started to go up out to the room, and they said, what are you doing? Even my beautiful wife said, what in the world are you thinking? <laughs> I said, I really don't know, but this was so good. <laughs> I, I usually like better when jokes are good, when, when, they, when, they, when they end up with happy endings. I usually give to, to my daughters what I what I'd say, short, bad news. I make it to enjoy the good news later. So I say, for example, oh, I'm sorry, we didn't win the prize. Yes, we did. Or, for example, I go shopping, and then I come back home, and I said, I'm sorry, but I couldn't find what I was looking for. And they said, oh, Dad, don't worry. I said, yes, I found it. So this is what I call Controlled micro-suffering. Controlled micro-suffering. My theory is that it leads to a greater joy. This is my theory. To me, it widens the range of emotions. So if you're feeling normal and then you get, you get a bad new, you widen the emotional range, and then the happiness <laughs> is bigger. This is my theory. I know you can argue about this. Uh, we have some discussions at home about this. But I think, I think it has some, it has some good point. In any case, a few seconds of bad news might make sense, but much more would be absurd. The funny thing is that sometimes we are the ones who make ourselves suffer more than needed. Maybe for unreal things, for things that are not worth it, but we keep doing it. There is a book called The Uselessness of Suffering. In that book, it says that if we analyze in our daily lives, about 95% of the time we suffer is useless. It's good for nothing. However, there are people that live plagued to pain in spite of that. They settle in the pain that they have experienced maybe years ago, and for them, suffering becomes part of their identity. It's my pain. It becomes part of, them, part of themselves. Hello, I'm Daniel, the one who was fired. Hello, I'm Daniel, the one who was abandoned. Hello, I'm Daniel, I was drunk. Hello, I'm Daniel, I had a terrible childhood. Oh, whatever. It might not be so explicit in our relationships, but we imply that sometimes. Some people hold on to their pain as if it was their most precious treasure. They treasure their pain. It's like sometimes I go to homes in a pastoral care, and I talk to them, and they say, it's like, let me show you my ring. And they open the, their hearts, and they show you their pain. For some people, it's like they have a storage of their pain, and they tell you, this is, this is from 74. This is from 86. This is from last year. This is my pain. They keep relieving it and bringing it to the present. They watch it, they open it, they treasure it, but they just don't get over it. It's a form of self-pity that doesn't let us grow. You know what Ellen G. White says about self-pity? Look at this. Self-pity is deteriorating to the characters of those who cherish it, and it exerts an influence that spoils the happiness of others. When you build your identity based on your sufferings, based on your pains, based on an injustice, an accident, a misfortune, you're letting that thing control all your life. It is better to rebuild your identity not based on the pain, but based on another reality that we will introduce today. With that in mind, we turn to John chapter 20. Now, verse 11. Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? Let me just stop here for a minute. Why are you crying? Now imagine the angels. The angels had, 
had lived the whole plan of salvation. They had seen creation, they had seen the fall, they had seen the Israel people throughout the, what we call Old Testament, they had seen Jesus being born, they had seen his ministry, they had seen Jesus die. Even this phrase, it is done. They knew what that meant, but they had seen Jesus' resurrection. So the whole universe was finally happy. It was good news. The most important plan of the plan of salvation, the most important part, had been fulfilled. Mankind would be rescued. I want to point out that there was joy in heaven, but not on earth. There was joy in heaven, but not on earth. The disciples were crying, hidden, and sometimes I feel that we don't live up to the reality with capital letter. Reality, eternal reality. We just don't live up to that. We live upon all reality. We just don't get what is going on in the universe. I like this t-shirt of eternal mode because it helps us to face all reality with a different perspective the perspective from eternity. So they say, why are you crying? And there is an invitation to reflection to all of us. Why? Come on, seriously. What's the true reason? What's behind those tears? Do you cry for your broken dreams? Do you cry for your expectations? For the plans you had that cannot be fulfilled? Do you just feel sorry for yourself? Oh. Poor me. She said, they have taken my Lord away, and I don't know where they have put him. Now, was that true? Was the reason she gave true? No, it wasn't. It was her imagination. It was her interpretation. We sometimes do this. We live up to our imaginations, our interpretation, but they are not true. They are just our explanations of the universe or the pain that we have. No one had taken Jesus. She was making that up. The Desire of Ages tells us that she thought someone had stolen the body because maybe some people think, thought that Jesus was not rich enough to be in that tomb. She said, oh, I knew it. I knew it. He couldn't be here. Jesus has been robbed. I knew it. I'm sick of the Romans. I'm sick of the Pharisees. I'm sick of injustice. I'm sick of everything. That's why I cry. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus, which is also amazing. He asked her, woman, why are you crying? Again, who is it that you are looking for? Now, imagine Mary. She said, so who's this? You're the gardener? Did you take Jesus? Did you take the body? I knew it. He's not good enough, right? Tell me what it is and I will take him. She was all crying. But the first thing that is striking is that she didn't realize him. Does it sound familiar to you? Sometimes we are so, so plagued to our pain, to our sorrow, to our worries, fights, that God is in front of our, uh, in front of our eyes and we don't recognize him. Mary was sitting at the tomb of her broken dreams, her broken dreams. And do you know why Mary didn't realize it was Jesus? Maybe it's because Mary was not looking for Jesus. What was she looking for? She was looking for a dead man. She couldn't find the dead man she was looking for. She was looking for a corpse. Where is the corpse? Where are my problems? Where is my pain? Where is it? We live frustrated. We live with our own storms, arguing with everyone, complaining with the Pharisees, complaining with the Romans. This pilot is a covert, sick of the Romans, sick of everything, and we even complain to Jesus. So what? Who are you? So plug to our, to our pain that we are real with everyone, even with the angels. I believe it's okay to cry on Friday when your dreams have been broken, when there is no answer, where there is uncertainty, where you don't know what is going to happen. There's time to cry. 
but there is time for joy and hope. And on Sunday, it wasn't time to cry. It was time for joy, hope, and a new future. Jesus said to Mary, Mary! Then she turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have not ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers. Go to my brothers. I like this. And tell them, I am ascending to my Father and to your Father, and to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. So Jesus said, Mary, what? Mary is me. <gasps> Stop crying. Stop crying. I need you to do me a favor. Would you please tell the good news to my brothers? Stop crying and tell the good news. You know what? That's where the church started. It started with a woman telling the good news. The first one who could say, I have seen the Lord. Let me finish this here. There are many people in pain. There are many people plugged to pain. There are people suffering. I know suffering is real. This world is a mess. But the message this morning is that we have good news to face suffering. Jesus has risen and has promised to return, and this changes everything. I'm going to give you some homework for today. Think of recurring thoughts of painful experiences you have had. Maybe thoughts that made you cry, that makes you feel unhappy, that made you feel depressed or feel discouraged. Take some time, maybe in the prayer walk, and maybe in the upper room, take those thoughts to Jesus with an open heart. And I want you to imagine Jesus looking at you, smiling and say, why are you crying? Why? Stop crying. Stop complaining. Stop looking at the grave. Stop looking at the past. Stop looking for a dead man. Dead man. Stop looking back. Stop remembering what happened years ago, months ago, days ago. Stop arguing with even with the angels. It will all be over soon. And Jesus says to us this morning, I need you to tell the world that I have risen, that I am alive, and that I'll be back soon. May this be your thought today and always. Amen. Everybody, um, I'm singing a song which is called The Voice of Truth and I like this song very much because it's saying that even if you're failing, um, God is there for us that we can recover and, we do, and that we don't have to be afraid of anything. To climb out of this boat and me onto the crashing waves, to step out of my comfort zone to the realm of the unknown where Jesus is, and He's soaring out to sand. But the waves are calling out my name and loving me, reminding me of all the times I've tried before and failed. Waves that keep on telling me time, time again, boy, you never win. You never win. But the voice of truth tells me a different story. The voice of truth says, Do not be afraid. And the voice of truth says, This is for my glory. Out of all the voices calling out to me I would choose to listen and believe the voice of truth Oh, what I would do to help the kind 
kind of string it takes to stay on for a tiger Who's just a sling and a stone Surround by the sound of a thousand warriors Shaking in the armor Wishing they'd have had the strength to stand But the giant's calling out my name and he loves me Reminding me of all the times I've tried before and failed the giant keeps on telling me time, time again, boy, you'll never win, you'll never win. But the voice of truth tells me a different story. The voice of truth says do not be afraid. And the voice of truth says this is for my glory. Out of all the voices calling out to me I would choose to listen and believe the voice of But the storm was just the right size We'll put a giant on the ground And the waves, they don't seem so high From on top of the looking down I was so with the wings of eagles When I stop and listen to the sound Jesus singing over of truth says do not be afraid and the voice of truth says this is for my glory out of all the voices called and not to me I would choose to listen and believe I would choose to listen and believe the voice of truth Let us pray together. Vater im Himmel, ich danke dir für diesen wunderschönen Tag heute. Ich danke dir, dass wir dein Wort hören können. Danke, dass wir hier gemeinsam sein dürfen. Ich danke dir auch ganz besonders, dass du uns durch unseren Schmerz durchträgst, dass du da immer bei uns bist. Ich bitte dich ganz besonders, schenke uns deinen Segen am heutigen Tag. Mach, dass wir miteinander connecten können, aber auch ganz besonders mit dir verbunden bleiben. Danke, dass du einfach durch und durch gut bist. Amen. Thank you, Leonie, for praying with us. Um, if you want to go and pray yourself, we have the prayer walk. I want to remind you of that. Um, the descriptions of the or the directions, are in the booklet on pages tw uh, 32 and 33. Please look at that. Since we didn't have too much time for conversation and discussions, our next agenda item are going to be the small groups. You maybe already heard of them. They're going to be happening every morning after the morning program in the same place and are going to be based on the morning discussions. In these small groups, the questions are going to be translated in the different languages. You're going to have the app for that, or you can look it up on the website, on our official AYC website. The numbers, you have a number on your badge. It's, you can see it right there where it is. Um, the numbers are... Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you can see on the screen where you have to go according to the numbers. Hall E is this hall right here. Hall D is the hall right outside where the chill out lounge is. And hall C is where all of you had breakfast this morning. You can see it on the screen as well. Um, there are also going to be volunteers holding up big signs with the numbers so nothing can go wrong. Um, just check, or if you have no idea, check the booklet or the app, or you can ask at the info desk.
Hope you guys have fun time and you hope you find your groups, you can dive into your topic and yeah, have fun. Welcome back to the studio. Um, that was a nice presentation by Daniel, and we're excited to explore that. Um, beside me, I don't have Vera anymore. I have my good friend Brayden, and he's actually a fellow Australian. Brayden, introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so my name is Brayden Enterman, and like Levi, I've recently moved from Australia to Finland. I think it's been almost precisely a year. Wow. My wife, who is Finish, so very similar situation to Yeah, you, there's Levi. something about that dynamic, <laughs> isn't there? I don't know, yeah, there's <laughs> lots of, um, there's a real bond between Australia and Finland. So, you know, Levi, Vera, me, and my wife, Elise, and we have a little son named Levi, actually. Okay, wow. This is fascinating, yeah. This is Levi Johnson, as, as you know. Guess what my son's middle name is? It's John. Levi, yeah. John, and, and we I, I must have made a pretty good impression on you. <laughs> Look, when we realized that um, our son's name was very much like your name, well, it certainly didn't put us off. So I think that's a, um, like, yeah, that's I think that's good. a, that's a good, good thing. But we didn't think that we would be living so close or doing ministry together. Years ago, I remember telling the Lord, because uh, Vera was actually a Bible worker at my church, because I was working as a pastor. Australia, and I remember saying to the Lord, you know what, I could hang out with these guys a lot. I was just really blessed by their, their friendship, and little did I know that give a few years, we would be living 20 minutes away from each other, and have a distinct and clear call to share the gospel uh, here in Finland. And so, look, we don't know the language, let's be honest, but we're going to do something about that. We pray yeah. that God helps us. Yes. And we actually get to do a live stream Bible study with each other every week. Yeah, we're, just, it's we're, fun to work together. In a way, we've been like preparing for this, yeah, right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Wonderful. We're so glad that you're still with us. Um, we have plenty to come in the program. I want to also let you know that I've been looking through the chat and the discussion, and I've seen that we've we've had some interesting countries join in. I've seen the Germany, Netherlands. So hi to all of you watching from Germany and, and the Netherlands. But I also saw a comment from India. Really? India. Someone from India is joining in. I want to welcome you. That's, that's really cool. We also have someone from Peru who is actually behind the scenes here. Um, so many countries. We're from Australia. We're not even from the TED or the EUD. Um, but we don't discriminate. Anyone's welcome. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wonderful. We're actually um, just waiting on a few few people to come um, to join us in this panel discussion because the more the merrier and the greater discussion we want to have. And so, yeah, we're so glad that you're you're joining with us. Now, I think that's the the importance of taking time. This is what the, um, the participants are doing right now. They're starting to break up into yeah. smaller groups to be able to kind of digest the message. Yeah, and you can see them behind us a little bit. They kind of moving into different places um, because let's be honest the, the statistics say that 
what you hear, there's only a very small percentage that you actually remember yeah. and internalize. Yeah. And something that increases the chances of us internalizing and being blessed from what we hear is actually digging it into, into it ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I love the Bereans in the book of Acts. They searched daily in the scriptures to see if those things were so. They heard the message preached to them. Mm -hmm. And they said, I want to go to the Bible. And I want to examine this for myself. Yeah. And yeah. so I think that's a great habit and a great, a great thing. And I want to encourage you in your life. It's, um, it's, it's super nice to listen to great sermons. But we're, we're called to be Bereans and get in there for ourselves and examine it. And so the panel, these chairs are going to be filled up here. Yeah. The panel, we want to be able to consider some questions and have you considered some of the questions with us. Mm, mm. Um, and, 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 and because, look, this, this particular story, um, it's one of my favorite stories to share um, on devotional life. Yeah, wow. Please because share more. I might, I might share. Should we have a little prayer together yeah, and we can, um, we can let's start do that. Considering. Also, let, just before we have a, a word of prayer, I want to let you know that you can actually discuss directly with myself and our team here. If you download the app Wova, W-H-O-V-A, you will actually be able to type in and search the hybrid team and you can send us direct messages. So please interact with us during this, this discussion as well. Awesome. Let's, let's have a prayer together. Father in heaven, while our panelists are coming and we take a little bit of time to consider your scriptures, your word. It's our prayer that you would enlighten our eyes and give us some encouragement. Feed us, mm. uplift us, and guide our conversation in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. What do you got for us, Brady? So, one of, the, one of the challenges for anyone who has made a disciplined, concerted effort to be able to come before God every morning mm -hmm. in prayer and reading a scripture is the fact, well, you start out pretty sincere, right? Like, I'm going to read my Bible every day. Yes. I'm going to pray every day, and I'm going to come before God. It's going to be wonderful. And what do you come up against pretty quickly? Let me tell you, if you haven't, if you're one of the rare people that hasn't experienced this, you wake up in the morning, and you can scarcely open your eyes. A little you're so fatigued. exhausted <laughs> because whatever kept you up late the night before, and you're just... You read in the Bible and you just feel emotionally blank. And someone says, was that time with God refreshing this morning? And you're just like, I don't think so. You're just I actually mean, I quite just worn out. I just stumbled and struggled through it. And yeah. repeatedly having experiences where you're so fatigued and your emotions don't seem to correspond with the glory of the message can leave you quite feeling vulnerable and can actually start to say, is God even with me? Is God even caring? And we can actually be emotionally in a place of confusion, yes. exhaustion, yeah. and we can very much relate to Mary who had tears in her eyes and mm. that blurred her vision to the Savior that was right there with her in the garden mm. when she came to mm -hmm. find Him in the morning. Yes. And yes. so when, when our panelists join us and they're, they're just loading up right now, I want to explore a little bit more about this, this idea of coming to find Jesus in the morning and having your emotions blurring your vision that you don't see that Jesus is closer than you could possibly ever realize. Because we're more plugged into pain than we actually think. Like this world has a lot of painful experiences that we've all been through. We can all relate to Mary, right? That's right. We can all relate to the pain that she is going through. And sometimes plugging into that pain is difficult because it puts tears in our eyes. And if we use that illustration, Mary struggled to see Jesus for who he truly was because of the pain she was experiencing. And I think when I, when I examine this particular story, you've got, how Im, you've got how Mary feels over and against what actually is. And this is, mm. the, this is the reality that we have to face, is that what I feel in the moment can be very different from what actually is. Yes. So really, it was a good day. Yeah, it, it was, was a great day. day. Like the best day. Jesus had risen from the grave. Like victory was set in stone, it was won. Jesus is literally standing there watching her with probably tears in his eyes of love. The two angels are there just getting ready to herald that Christ and this lady is just weeping and weeping and feeling like her world is at an end. It's like the, the guys on the road to Emmaus. They're crying, they're discouraged. It's a good day. It's a great it's day. It's a great day. And, and I, I, just, I just want to add into that as well that Jesus is not just, it, it may have been a good day, but Jesus wasn't just celebrating. He saw Mary as well. 
And actually, I believe that Jesus had tears in his eyes watching Mary suffer. I think so. We have a sympathizing, sympathizing high priest, right? We have a high priest that actually knows our struggles because he's experienced them as well. The difficulties of life. So when we're down, it may be a great day. Jesus may be risen from the grave, but he still knows our struggles and he still understands them. And that's the beauty of prayer, right? We can, we can take these problems to God and he understands whether it's a good day, bad day, in the middle, whatever. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. I think our panelists are ready. I think, I think that we got one, two, three, four of them here. That's looking, looking good, Prom- yeah. looking promising. Mm-hmm. And What's not looking promising is our number of seats We're down here. a seat. We're grabbing <laughs> another seat to pull in. Okay. Sweet. We'd like to invite our panelists over. Come on in. Come into the frame. Yes. And please introduce us to yourself. You are? My name is Melissa. Melissa. We have Melissa. And then we, we met you yesterday. Yes. My name is Annika. Annika, Annika. yes. And we have two just getting their mics fixed. Um, where are you guys from? Annika, we know that you are from? Switzerland and from Finland. Switzerland and from Finland. That's Ooh, right. Okay. That's right. Wonderful. And Melissa? I'm from Norway. From Norway. Norway. And Please introduce yourself. Hey, um, Katarina. I'm from Slovakia and living in Finland currently. Okay, wonderful. I'm Lukas and I'm from Turku, Finland. Okay, nice. so we have some locals here. <laughs> wonderful, Good. wonderful. Um, <clears throat> I think the best thing for us to do is read what we're about to discuss. And yeah. so, do you guys have your Bibles? I see some of you have your Bibles. If not, we have a bi- Bibles here that we can yeah. share. We're going to be reading in John chapter 20. So if you have your Bibles at home, please open to John chapter 20, where we find this story of Mary. What about, Mel, would you be willing to pray now that all the panelists are here as we open the Word? Yeah. Yeah. Dear Jesus, I just want to thank you for the opportunity that we can be here and that we can discuss your Word, and I pray that we can see more of you as we do so. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So John chapter 20, we're going to be in verse 11, 11, and we're going to be reading through to verse 18, and I think it's wise to just go through the whole, the whole lot, and I want to ask the question, and you can be thinking of it at home, what stood out to you? What sparks your interest? What relates to you? Um, yeah, just what, what, what do you find interesting about this story? So I might hand my Bible to you, God. Thank you. So John chapter 20, verse 11 to 18. Should I start reading? Go for it. Yeah. Right. Mary Magdalene sees the risen Lord, but Mary stood outside by the tomb, weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting, one at the end, uh, one at the head, and one other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. There they said to her, "Woman, why are you weeping?" She said to them, because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Now, when she had, uh, had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there and did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? She, supporting him, uh, supposing him to be a gardener, she said to him, sir, If you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him, Rabboni, which is to say, teacher. Jesus said to her, do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my father, and your father, and to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things to her. Yeah, wow. Thank you. Interesting story. Mm. And it's, it's, it's amazing that she, she barely recognized Jesus. We were touching on that just before. What stands out to you guys? What do you find interesting about this story? What perks your interest? To me, it's 
really fascinating to see because I can like look from outside on the story. Mary is inside and she's like trapped in her own world, but I can look from outside. And when I look at it, I see that there is Mary in her pain, but right beside her, there are two angels and Jesus is there, but she can't recognize him. Mm. And from this story, I take for me, even though I can't see Jesus every moment, he's right there beside me. And just knowing that is such a relief. Mm -hmm. So that's something that stands out in the story for me. Wonderful, mm. beautiful. So true. Mm. I remember I was working as a Bible worker in a small town in Australia. I was quite young when I was working there. And it was really tough, a very, very um, difficult town to work in. I was young and I was just worn out and exhausted. And I remember fronting up to morning devotions week after week after week, and I was so exhausted, and I was probably quite lonely out there, just quite isolated and just, just feeling really, really low. And I remember one morning, I just said, God, I just don't have the strength. I feel so overwhelmed. I feel so confused. And this distinct conviction came to my mind, and the, the question was this, what's wrong? I quickly fronted up and loaded up all of my the, the, all the things that are wrong with this situation, I started telling God, oh, this is wrong, this, I, I can't believe that, all these different things. And when, when I finally got it all off my chest, promises from the Bible started flooding to my mind like, like rapid fire, boom, boom, boom. The Bible says that God sits enthroned between the cherubim, mm. that we have a merciful and compassionate high priest who ever lives to make intercession for us. He's touched with the feeling of our infirmities. And in that moment, this... I came to the point where I looked up and I said, God, nothing is wrong. Nothing's wrong. I don't feel good today. I feel, I feel like I need a holiday. I'm feeling pretty <laughs> emotionally out of it today. But nothing is actually wrong. Mm. Because when we step into the scriptural perspective and the worldview here, everything's fine. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, it's so beautiful to be able to acknowledge, I'm hurting now. Yeah. My emotions are blurring my vision. But I'm choosing to see by faith what scripture says it's the reality of God's goodness and His love. And in that moment saying, actually, nothing is wrong. And I, I can really relate to Mary in that particular way. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I think that like, pain and grief is such a strong emotion that we get easily taken over by it. And somehow we get blinded. But even now, as you mentioned, promises from the Bible immediately came to me from Isaiah 43. And it says, if you walk through fire, it should not set you ablaze. So it's very much describing pay painful processes in our life. But still, there is the promise that it might hurt now, but you'll be better when you pass through it. I will be there with you. I will mm. protect you and guide you. And so that's very much like this reassurance to not focus on the pain, but what comes after. Mm. Mm. I think that's very much like the, the song, the special item after the presentation today. Mm. Uh, the, it's like the wind and the waves are saying one thing, but the voice of truth tells me a different story. Yeah. 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 And I, I love that, that kind of a, that perspective. Mm. Um, and what, anyone else have something stand out from the, 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 the story? I think this maybe builds on what's been said already, but I think it's also cool what Jesus says there in the end in verse 17 there where he says, my father is your father and my God is your God. Hmm. So, you know, we're not too different from Jesus anyway, are we? You know, we still have the same God that Jesus believed in and that raised Jesus from the dead. That's also the God hmm. that we have and that we can believe and that we can trust. Totally. Totally. Sometimes it's really hard to tap out of our own emotions, our own little bubble. Like what you said, Annika, it's just amazing that we get to just see it objectively and, and kind of not really resonate so much with Mary and the struggles she's going through because we know Jesus has risen. But she was, she was stuck in her emotions and just really struggling. But the reality was that Jesus had risen. Yeah. And I think sometimes just to know that we can step out of our own little bubble and circumstance and realize that everything is okay, mm -hmm. that God is still in control, that He's still on the throne, is just such a reassuring thought that, yeah, I'm actually, I'm actually okay. Um, I want to explore the next question with you guys. The next question is, why do you think that angels and Jesus insisted on asking, why are you crying to Mary? Why do you think they were asking that? What a great question. Well, if I'd say, like, for me, it comes as this, like, wake-up call. Okay. Like, hey, just pause for a second and actually think, like, what's the reason why you're crying? 
mm -hmm. because again, we get like, overwhelmed with our emotions quite often. And we just need sometimes to take that step back and actually like, think reasonably about what is the situation that I am in and why am I crying? Because mm -hmm. sometimes we just lose control of that. So maybe what, how I understand it, how it speaks to me is mm. a wake up call. A wake up call, yeah. This is a very female way to respond, but I'm gonna say it anyway. If I can just um, put my emotions into words, the problem is not yet solved, but I feel so much lighter. And I think it's helpful to just <laughs> kind of reflect, not just um, go with the emotions, but ask yourself, yeah, what is wrong at the moment? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why yeah. am I this upset? Yep. Yeah. To just Something put, to put it, it into down. words. Put yeah. it down. Put yeah. it on the table, definitely. Yeah. I think it could also be a way of like, Jason and Angels acknowledging her feelings mm. as well and saying, hey, we see that you're crying. Yeah. Why is that? I love that. Like they actually care why why she's crying. Yeah. yeah. I would say also that, that it's like quite a like repeats itself quite a many times in Bible that God asks like a person to do like a question because a question is usually usually the best way to get an answer or something because the person starts to think for themselves. It's a great like idea. for yeah, example great when God like was said to Abraham to sacrifice Isaac, it wasn't that God wanted to test his uh, Abraham's faith strong enough because God already knew, but it was to show to Abraham that like where his uh, current situation with his faith is. So I think that same thing is happening here that that God is like. To, to Mary that, that, hey, why are you crying? So Mary starts to think for herself, and it's like, wait, why am I crying? And mm. it, that like brings up the, the, the answers. When like people have these bad situations and they do not know the answers, but when they talk, start talking with other people, they come up with the answers themselves mm. because you start talking, and, and so, so questions are, are usually in my experience, the be best way to get answers. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, th thanks so much for sharing that. I, <clears throat> my mind actually went to the same place when I, th when I think about Genesis chapter 3, where God comes to speak to, to Adam and Eve, and He asks them several questions that He knows the answers mm. yeah. to those questions, but it's designed to engage the mind, and I really thank mm -hmm. you for bringing out that point. Mm. It came yeah. to my mind as well, because whenever I read that part in the Genesis, I was thinking, like, He asked them, what have you done? And it's the same way as like when you have a parent and let's say a toddler who has drawn something on a white wall with a crayon and the parent already knows what happens. What, why is the thing there? Who did it? But he still asks the child, why did you do this? And gives the child the opportunity to either say, say like, okay, well, I was bored or like, I didn't know better or ask forgiveness or something or lie, you know? It gives us the free choice, which is the whole point of God's love, the free choice to answer to him truthfully to admit to us, okay, I, I'm sorry I did wrong, but it's like leaves the conversation open to go to both ways and it's not just violently putting you into this obedience, basically. Mm. Mm. Yeah, thanks for sharing, Kathy. Yeah. Got a question here. What can we do when angels don't appear in the midst of our sufferings and we must handle our Sunday morning's pain alone? Mm. Uh, the speaker put some of these together as a, um, as a kind of a guide for people to discuss. And it's a fascinating concept because we know that we're never alone. But when we emotionally feel that we're when alone... When we don't perceive. We don't perceive. Right. Yeah. I just want to make a, a brief observation about, about Mary. You know, how much she loved Jesus. Mm. You know, how many of us would be stoked if two angels appeared when we come to find Jesus in the morning, mm. in our morning devotions? And it's almost like through a tissue, she's just like... <sighs> No one else will do. No one else will do. She's just, all she wants is mm. Christ. Mm. Um, and I think it's such a beautiful uh, thought about morning devotions. But when we come to Jesus day by day and we are bearing pains alone, it says here, what, 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 ha, ha, what can we do when it's as though the angels don't appear and it seems like we're doing it a bit, bit harder than, you, you know. Mm. What's your thoughts on, on that concept? When we don't perceive God is near, 
Yeah, it's interesting. Mm. I think in those situations for me, that's when I'm glad I got friends mm. <laughs> and also got Christian friends. Because sometimes I think if I don't see Jesus, I can see Jesus through other people. Or other people can point. help me see Jesus the way mm. they see him. Mm. Mm -hmm. In times like these, um, the one text from Hebrew is really helpful to me. Faith is not about the things that you can touch, but it's a certainty that you just have inside your heart. Mm. And just knowing that I do not see the whole picture yet. The angels are there. Jesus is by my side, but I can't see it. I can't feel it all the time. But just knowing what I am perceiving is not the whole reality. There is mm. more to it. That gives me such a peace. Mm. And another thing is, um, I know I'm not there yet, but there will come a time when I can sit next to Jesus and I can say, do you remember that Sunday morning? I was in so much pain and I had all these questions and I felt so alone. Can you tell me what your perspective was on the situation? And I know when I will hear his answers, I will just know he did everything right and he was there, even though I couldn't feel it in the moment. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Behind the <laughs> scenes, putting all the puzzle pieces mm. together so that it wasn't as bad as it could have been or, yeah, just there the mm. whole time. I love that. Yeah. Y your comment about friends, I think, is such a, an important one because sometimes we feel in our world where everyone's got to have everything to be able to solve every problem. You know, we want, like for me, I want to have every tool in my, in my, in my toolbox to be able yeah. to solve everything. And <laughs> we do, but down, down the road, my father-in-law has all the tools. Like, we, well, sometimes we... In our day and age, we don't want to depend upon others so much. Mm -hmm. But God has designed that in fellowship, those who are down can be lifted up. And there's a beauty in actually helping someone get up in that time. I, I think of Jesus. When he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, remember when he say, said to his disciples, can you please watch with me? He actually was longing for sympathy and companionship through his trial. Mm. And so he himself was wanting to gather people around him to support him in his pain and it's a humbling thing to do but I think it's such a beautiful thing when we're in those times sometimes that phone call can you mm. can you pray for me can we catch up and talk about God like I'm mm. I'm not feeling it at the moment I, I just want to have, have have God's people around me I think it's totally. a, a beautiful thing and I think I think we can learn from that as well and take the approach to look out for those around us too mm. because it is a very humbling thing to ask for help but it's a very easy thing to give help it's a very easy thing to give help. And, and we know people struggle. I know that I struggle and the people around me struggle. But yet I still just tend to keep to myself and try to do life myself. But I know it would be so much easier. Like God did not intend for us to be alone. He made us relational beings for a reason. Um, and so I think we can learn from that, that we, we have the ability to lift people's burdens as well, just like Jesus lifted ours. Yeah. I want to know if, were you going to say something, Melissa? Okay. <laughs> you can, okay. yeah, go for I it. I was just thinking about it when you said what you said, Annika, because um, I'm a pastor back home in Norway. So when I talk to the teens, they often come and they ask me, oh, but, you know, how can I know that Jesus is there and blah, blah, blah. So then I often like to explain it as like, you know, two parallel tracks, kind of. That my faith is kind of like, I have, I know that God is there. It's like the Autobahn in Tyskland, you know, or Germany, you know, it's straight, it's, it's going this direction, it's steady. You know, you know it's there. And then you have my emotions go on a separate track, like a crazy roller coaster, you know, up and down and up and down and up and down. But I know that regardless where I am on this, I can always tap in mm -hmm. to my faith mm -hmm. because God's relationship to me doesn't change Amen. regardless of how I feel in this relationship. And that's kind of like what I think to what the question that you asked, you know, what do we do on the Sunday morning when we don't feel it? It's like, I don't have to feel it because I can intellectually know that God's relationship to me doesn't change mm. just because I feel different or because I'm struggling to feel it. God is still always there because, you know, that's the steady, steady tracks that just goes and goes and goes and goes and never changes. Beautiful. One of the, yeah, go ahead, bro. I would like to add on the, the previous points of, of having friends that is really important, like, especially from my own experience, now that I have moved into a totally different town where like my friends are really far, far away. Um, like having a home church 
that you can go to is really important because during the work week, you really easily start to forget like that you need the other people like in faith, the siblings in faith that you remember that you are not alone in this world and and like in my exa like experience i had this two week period where i was like i didn't meet any any christians and i like started feeling in my soul that how the faith was like trembling because i i didn't have the connection i i was was thinking that I'm alone in this world with my faith and I'm struggling, struggling alone. But I like had a call with my friend and was like, God promised us that I will know the truth. But I was like, yeah, at the time it, it was like really a blessing, but I wanna like feel the truth. I wanna feel God because God is, is truth. But he said that, that usually Bible means also like with, um, like knowing usually means also feeling. So at that moment I was like realized that how important friends and, and the home church is. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. I think it's important to find those ways, like how do I connect with God? Mm. You know, friends is one thing, having a local church is important, but also like in the everyday life that you talked about, you know, I like to go out in nature. That's one of my ways. My husband, he will listen to podcasts. That's his ways. Mm -hmm. You know, there's many ways of doing that for yourself in your everyday life. Yeah. I just want to share um, with our listeners and with us today just, just some practical ways that I've found in, the, in those particular times. And it goes back to my original story about being a Bible worker and feeling those things. We, we cannot underestimate the power of the Word to give perspective in those moments. And I do this regularly. If I, if I know that I'm just exhausted, fatigued, and I'm just feeling out of it, I, I, I've memorized portions of Scripture, and I try to do it every day. I'm writing Scripture songs to be able to put these in my mind, and I say, it is written. Mm. It is written. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called the children of God. God demonstrates His own love toward us in that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. And I start just punching them out with boldness. I don't just whisper them. I'm like... I, this is an active experience for me. I'm on my knees. I'm just claiming the promises, claiming the promises. And I push forward in faith and I claim the word. Mm. And it bring, when I emerge out the other end of that, I'm alive. Like I'm p literally pumped. And I'm energized. I'm strength, uh, strengthened because the word of God has given me perspective. And it has overcome the confusion that our emotional experience can be. So I want to encourage you um, to get to the word memorize passages read if you can't memorize just read it out and just say god you've said it right here you've said it right here let me go to that other one you've said it right here i just opened up to one it says no weapon formed just like the small snippet that when i came to finland it was in the middle of the pandemics and i wasn't really in faith but i started coming to home church and in the middle of that i ended up going through a heartbreak and feeling very lonely isolated as a foreigner in finland and at this point, I was so focused on my own pain and pitying myself. But somehow I had this moment of like revelation that I was thinking like, okay, I can't do anything that is in my power to help myself. And I just automatically started praying mm. and slowly like brought comfort to me. And the people in the community reached out to me themselves. And when it was so hard for me to say, okay, I'm, I'm really hurting. I still was shown that I'm not alone. And I just remember also writing out on a paper Bible verse, just the one from Isaiah that I was uh, mentioning earlier. And I put it above my bed and then whenever I was just struggling and very depressed at the moment, I would read that and I was like, yeah, I need to, I need to remember that he's with me. And then like more, less than a year from that period, I was already baptized and mm. now I'm here. Mm. <laughs> Amen. Mm. Amen. Amen, that's cool. Yeah. And what? So sometimes, like you're so invested in in the pain or suffering that you're going through, that you cannot see God or God's words. Like for example, in in Mary's case, she was so like depressed by the situation that that he didn't find Jesus, that she couldn't literally see Jesus in front of her. 
because she was concentrating only on the pain. Mm. So it, it like blinded her. So sometimes I think we feel that also I in our lives. Yeah. 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 Imagine yeah. just if we feel like, just, just imagine that you stub your toe on a corner of like a furniture. In that moment, you pause for a second. You forget where you were going, what you were going to do. But you stop and you focus on the pain and just like, oh, why did it happen? You're angry or frustrated or something. But for the moment, all you focus on is that I stubbed my toe and it's hurting. And then maybe, okay, you get some time to breathe it out and you continue with whatever you were planning to do. But for the moment when you are hurting, you're so focused on that that you forget about rest. Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then if we like, connect that to the emotional pain, it's quite the same. I love how this, uh, the first verse that we read, and I can really resonate with this. It says, but, but Mary stood outside the tomb weeping, and as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the tomb. From Mary's perspective, Jesus wasn't there, and Jesus had failed her. In a, in a strange way, from her perspective, she, was, she had this pain where she's just weeping outside the tomb because Jesus is not there. Mm -hmm. Jesus had failed her. But in reality, Jesus had not failed her at all. In fact, he had done the very thing to save her, right? And, and, I, and I can so resonate with this because in moments where I don't know and I don't understand what is God doing, I'm standing outside the tomb and I'm just weeping. I'm like, God, where are you in this situation? What is going on in my life? I cannot see you leading. I don't know where you are. You've failed me. But I know that he's... He's working, mm. and He's working for our salvation. And so I can definitely resonate with Mary because at times I'm just like, God, where are you? This is so difficult what I'm going through, and I feel alone. I feel like I'm doing it all myself. But God sees us, and He's working. Yeah. 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 If I could add to that, this reminded me. I have a friend who's, who's blind, and she has a guide dog. Mm. And we're just like, I overheard a conversation. We're like in a car. I wasn't necessarily like participating, but I was listening. And she said that these guide dogs are taught this intelligent disobedience, meaning that like if they're supposed to cross the road, for example, uh, the person gives a sign to the dog that, okay, we can go, we can cross. But the dog, for example, will not, not go, it will stay. Because the dog sees, okay, hey, there is a car coming or somebody on a bicycle. You can't hear a bicycle, you know? So it's going to stay there and not move. And the person might be frustrated. Why are you not moving? But you can't see the whole, a great point. Um, like the whole situation, the whole perspective. And so being in faith and being a Christian also means sometimes that, all right, this place where I'm right now is very inconvenient, but I have to trust that God put me mm. here for a purpose. Maybe it's protecting me from something much worse. If I would cross this road now, a bike would hit me and I could die. I could get badly hurt. Sometimes these dogs are taught to kind of bounce into you or you, you can even like uh, stumble across the dog and fall, get a scrape or something, but it's saving you from something so much bigger and so much more dangerous, inconvenient. So it's about the trust that you believe, that you put into God, into your relationship. Yeah. And so I very much that. also as a guide dog. I love that analogy. I yeah. think it's very appropriate. <coughs> look at Mary, to me she is a really great role model. She didn't get everything right. She was there looking for the dead Jesus. But at least she was there looking for him. And sometimes when I am hurt and frustrated, it's easier to say, okay, that's it. I'm so disappointed that yeah. this does not work. Mm -hmm. But in her pain, she's crying and she's looking for him. And that's something that I want to take into my life as that's well. Point. That I just... Um, cling to Jesus even then when I don't understand everything. Yeah. I like that. She's actually at the right place. She may be in the total, like a confused state of mind and she's hurting, but she's at the right place. She's, she's where Jesus was the last time she saw him. And I think that when we go through troubles and trials, we kind of run the other direction and we're like, I'm out of here. I'm booking it. Like, I'm just so sick and tired of, you know, I'm fed up with all the difficulties that I'm going through. And it just seems like God is not hearing. But Mary here gives us a great example. She's at the right place. A thought comes to my mind from the song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. It says, oh, what needless pain we bear. 
It's fascinating, this concept of needless pain. Mm. This, it seems to be that there's some unavoidable pain, but there's additional pain that we can bear because we don't bring it to God in prayer. And I think about this lady, like human beings are just tortured and crucified God. Do you have a right to be upset about that? Do you, like, it's, it would be totally a wrong emotion or emotional response to be not grieving about the fact that God got tortured, mocked and ridiculed and killed mm. just a few days before. That is a justifiable, it's actually the correct response to actually weep and to be overwhelmed with emotion because of the injustice that had just taken place. But we know that the disciples, their, their pain was magnified or made additionally hard to bear because of their lack of scriptural understanding. Mm. And so I think this is such a fascinating thing. There are things in life that are unavoidably painful there are injustices that may be experienced and whatever. God does not intend for us to go, you know what, that's fine. That's fine. You know, that was a Suck total... It up, deal you with know, it. That was an absolute cruelty. That was a... No, that's fine. I, like, we're not called to be pieces of stone, right? We're not called to just have this blank, non-emotional response to things. There was a justifiable emotional response to what had happened. And yet Mary's position was made so much more difficult because like the rest of everyone in Israel, they were so slow to grasp what the Messiah really was. Mm. It's hard enough to see your God die, but to know that it's actually the, part of the plan, that makes <laughs> it a lot easier to bear. Yeah. And that's why in my life, I think an application for all of us and for our listener, to pray, God, what needless pain am I bearing? There is stuff that I'm going to have to carry. Jesus carried it. We have to carry it. But in what ways am I making my life so much more painful because I'm not aligned to the perspectives of Scripture and therefore have my burden alleviated? Mm. And I think it's an interesting concept for us to consider. Definitely. Mm. I also think it's inspiring, maybe, because I think we all have our struggles in different ways and different forms and different times. And, and then uh, when God sees us through it, in the end, He says, that she went to the disciples and she said, I've seen the Lord. Hmm. You know, what do we do afterwards? You know, often I think for myself, if I've gone through something, I know that God to help me through it, but then it's so easy to forget. And then I just mm -hmm. go back to normal. And, you know, what do I do about it afterwards? Do I actually go and say, hey, I experienced this. God helped me through it. This is amazing. God is still the Lord. Or do I so often just forget it? So I think that's quite something I can learn from it, at least, and something that I think is inspiring. Mm. how she was so down and yet she goes to the disciples and say, hey, I've seen the Lord, this is real. Yeah. Her painful experience was turned into something she could praise mm -hmm. about. She was telling people about her painful experience that now she has seen the Lord. After all the difficulties she's seen, and hindsight is such a great thing, isn't it? <laughs> it's so much easier to see things clearly in hindsight, right? Definitely. Um, and I think that... Yeah, we have a lot to praise God about because He's always working behind the scenes. Mm. We've got about three and a half minutes left of this study. I'm thinking we might switch to our last question here. Go for it. And this is a very practical one about how to help others. How would you help someone who cannot overcome hurts of the past? Because we, we've been talking primarily about ourselves and how we experience our pains in, 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 in relationship to God. But how do we help others? Any thoughts, any advice, any perspectives that God has given you? Well, it's not an easy one, but even just acknowledging the pain that, like, I mm. understand that you're hurting and it's all right, because many times we blame ourselves, like, I'm not supposed to feel like this, or, like, I'm not a good Christian if I'm, like, so focused on this and giving up on God, but just be there for them with whatever they're going through. Maybe if they feel like they want to, you can pray with them or for them, and you can always remember them in your prayers, even, like, behind your closed doors like when you're at home and before bedtime and there's a huge comfort in prayer and just mm -hmm. knowing that God already knows about this and just leaving it in his hands also if we can't do it practically. Mm. And I think it's, it's focusing on what Jesus did in this story. Mm. He asked, why are you weeping? He wanted to know what she was dealing with. I think, I think it's such a great point that you make that we should want to know how the people around us are going. How's life for them? We need to be in touch with them. But not only that, Jesus takes the time. I'm sure Resurrection Day would have been a busy day for Jesus, right? And he, he's on his way to do so many, so many jobs for us. But he has time to help Mary. 
He has time to have a conversation with a hurting soul. And I think a simple conversation can do so much for the people around us. And I just think, like, if we want to help people, we need to look in this story at how Jesus helped Mary. And I think we get a pretty good outline of what to do. Yeah. And I think another thing about the way that Jesus related to Mary, he didn't smother her. The angels didn't smother her in that moment. There was a respectful stance toward this grieving woman. And you've got Jesus standing there, somewhat in the, out of her periphery a little bit, standing there with compassion. He would have had tears in his eyes as he's just pondering this devo devoted soul. And just, he says, Mary. And there's this beautiful personal touch, like, I know you. Yeah. And I love this, that, that I know, and there was just this respectful but interested stance that the heavenly beings had toward this grieving woman, and it won the day. Yeah. It just broke through the emotional confusion, and when she heard Mary, that's what broke through, because she recognized his voice. It, that, she that recognized. came from a relationship as well, and I think that's such a great point as well, that if we really want to help people, we need to know them and they need to know us. From a relationship stance, we need to approach people. Do we really know these people? Because Jesus used her name. That's how she knew it was Jesus. That's when she realized when there was a relationship involved. Yeah. Should we have a prayer together to close our That'd study? That would be great. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, thank you for the privilege of studying the scriptures. They are a treasure house, and I pray that our listeners and each of us would carry some gems into this coming week that will bless us. Help us to remember that Jesus is nearer than we could possibly imagine and to listen to the voice of truth and to not be afraid. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Amen. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Thank you guys for being here as well. It's been a pleasure discussing this with you. Um, next, we're going to go to the workshops when, when they happen. We're going to be exploring the workshop with Pastor Johnson. Um, I can't remember his first name. Patrick. It's, it's Patrick. Patrick. Patrick Johnson. It's not me. Not Levi Johnson. <laughs> not, not me. Um, and we're going to be exploring with him disabilities and the Bible. Interesting topic. So thank you so much for joining with us. Thank you, guys.